but I want to change the chart size. But at the same time, I want to uh, do some review or asking you some questions whether you are comfortable with this or any technical questions. <laughs> So I assigned uh, one of the problems, I mean, uh, you want to establish your identity. So do you have any, have you any, do something? Well, the, well, the short the equation. So we have an identity like this. I mean, that's the, the starting point because this connect this uh, map with the potential here. Okay. So from here, you can see that uh, this will imply if, if uh, the boundary map agree on boundaries, then this will imply that uh, the Q1 minus Q2 is perpendicular to the P. Q1, Q2, and the PQ or Q2 is, is what? The product of all solutions. All product of solutions, right? Yeah. Corresponding to these equations. So this is a very nice result. I mean, very clear how do you, what, what indicate what is the, uh, what you have to do next. You want to show that somehow this is a complete in L2. So then this will imply that any perpendicular element has to be zero. So this will prove that Q and Q2. That's our goal, right? Okay, so that thing is important. And, and this is important. And also, so, so for input three, uh, we can prove that this is complete by constructing those special solutions. It's called an exponential growing solution, right? Yeah. But A, so A hood three is clear. So A hood two is not kind of clear Still, you can construct that kind of solution, but however, no solution is not, cannot be used directly to show that this is uh, complete. Okay. And we can get some kind of a compactness result. So later today, I'm going to show you how this compactness result will lead to uh, some local uniqueness. Okay, local uniqueness. Okay. So, so here, I, I uh, I'll give you an assignment, then you, you should, so, so the reason we, use, we do the Schrodinger equation is because that uh, our original equation is true. Can we reduce to this equation by, uh, by substitution, uh, Q is equal to square root. This reduction, right, it's yeah. a yeah. mystery, but however, <laughs> it's a, uh, Observation discovered, so it's a it's a reduction to that. So so that's why the Schrodinger equation with this potential turned out to be useful to handle this conductivity problem, inverse conductivity problem. Otherwise, we don't have to, I mean, spend so much time working with Schrodinger equation. Right? Of course, if you if you connect the Schrodinger equation, which I mean physics, then of course this problem itself is connected to the Scattering theories, in the scattering theory. Okay, so so itself is also useful. Okay, but here our main purpose is, is trying to treat the origin problem. So the assignment I give to you is that I want you to start directly from here. So the Dirichlet Newman map is defined to be equals uh, uh, R D U D A, right? Yeah. 
and, uh, and you can see that uh, uh, with this direct problems, whether it is possible to get something like uh, uh, R1 minus R2 with the Deuce to new map R1 minus R2 through a similar identity, whether mm -hmm. it is possible. So that's the one of the things I ask you to think about. And, and this problem is not like uh, the normal assignment, which I give you a, a statement that you're going to prove it. But uh, the statement is not given here. I just show you that I just give you a proof that there is an identity similar to that. Okay, similar identity. And I want you to, uh, to find this identity at the same time to prove so what you can use is you have to review the uh, idea going from here to here. The idea. What do you do? You multiply a yeah. second solution to the first equation, mm -hmm. then perform the integration by path. That's, yeah. that. That's the main idea. Now why can't you do the same thing here? So much time. Okay? You can also do this. So like U1 uh, and U2, right? U2 uh, gradient dot R gradient U1. Still equal zero. They can perform the integration by part, right? Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. uh, one thing I will say that this the identity exists, but however, identity is not exactly take the does not take exactly the same form of that. Something's different because you can see the equation are different, so that's why you are not expecting the same kind of uh, identity, but it's will be very similar. Or oh, very similar. Okay. So that's one thing. So, so um, do you have any question regarding these uh, ideas? So the next thing is, okay, this you, you just spend some time to work on. Okay, it's not difficult. Yes. I have one question. Yes. Is that R or gamma? This one? Yeah. It's just no pain. You can treat it as R. Okay, that's fine. I just want to make sure, because I get written R everywhere, and I'm like, now it looks like a gamma, and I think all of my notes are wrong. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's, well, <laughs> I've been putting R, so that's what you say. You say R, so that's what I write down. Use the polar point. Polar point, yeah. Polar, I don't know, I talk about that. PPT polar point. Oh, okay. Yeah, no problem with the writing. <laughs> PowerPoint, yeah. Okay, so uh, we are, so there's a, a, video, uh, a long way to go from here. But uh, the thing is, do you have any question regarding this uh, here? The, these, these lines. I mean, do you have any question about angry So the key is actually uh, in A to three is you, which we, we construct solution like this. Yeah. Now we didn't say in detail how this solution is constructed. Well, you can say that you can plug it into into the Schrodinger equation, then you'll come up with equation like with omega, right? It's, it's like this. The second one of the equations. And then the same says that in A plus 2, I'll give you a kind of a uh, the detail of construction, the procedure reduced to the divide training. Mm -hmm. But in A plus 3, or high dimensions, then this construction will involve more. I mean, the log quantum log analysis, so we didn't talk about that. But besides this construction, everything else in this case, in the high dimension case, is pretty clear because. Because once I have the solutions, then I use a trick, plugging the solution into here to create a Fourier transform of the difference, right? Yeah. So Fourier transform becomes zero, so then to the solve the problem. Yeah. Okay. Then two, when when A equal two, then then you still can construct a solution, but you lost the freedom. Because you, you lost a, a free parameter in, in, in this complex vector. Yeah. So you can still 
you can still get in the Fourier transform of Q and Q2, but however, you have a remainder which does not go to zero because you don't have a, another free parameter to go to infinity to eliminate the remainder. So that's a problem, right? That's a problem. So that's why um, <coughs> we can, so I, well, eventually we are, I'm going to show you how the angle two is, is, is formed, or angle two is formed. By this stage, we would like to talk about some kind of local uniqueness. Okay. The local uniqueness is to, <coughs> Local unit is true that uh, uh, <coughs> uh, if uh, you have two chains of Q1, Q2 uh, closed to something close to a, a reference potential, okay, a reference potential, and in certain, in certain part, okay, with lambda Q1 to lambda Q2, then this will imply that the uh, Okay, so this is for the local uniqueness. But local uniqueness is always uh, connected to a reference potential here. So you, so, so you can see that, uh, I can say the local uniqueness about the zero potential. This means that when Q is close to the zero potential, you have this problem. Or uh, local uniqueness close to one, potential one, I mean the a special potential, then it's carried the same here. Right? It's always connected to this reference, reference potential. Okay. So, uh, so for this purpose, um, it turns out that uh, in order for the local uniqueness to be hold near that potential, okay, in order to have these properties, and one the important requirement is that the P Q Q Q Q Q. Okay. So what is PQQ? It's the uh, product solution. But this time, it's different from PQQ2. PQQ2 is product solution. That product comes from uh, two, so two different solutions. One is from the Q1, the other one is from Q2, right? Uh, but here, we have for the uh, PQQ, so this means the solution, there's a U1, U2. They are both coming from the same equation, same Schrodinger equation. Okay. But that one is come from two different points right here. Okay, so what we're trying to show is that uh, as soon as this guy is complete in L2, I mean, as supposed to L2 space, you fix the wrong of the Hubert space, and then <coughs> you'll get a little bit. Now this one is useless. This one is useless in the n greedy equal to three because in the n greedy equal to three you are dealing with q and q two, right? Because you can shoot for any q and q two. This is complete. So therefore, there's no need to think about q q. Okay. But when n equal to two, for the local units, this cannot be important. This complete. But however, why this is complete? We don't know. Yeah. We don't know yet, but this is our uh, wall, the things we want to talk about. Okay. So, so are you clear about this idea about the setup here? Now, now we can go back to the previous lecture. Now, what we have done in the previous lecture. Okay, so the previous lecture it is, is going to talk about. We're focusing on this set, right? So what we have done is the following. So, so, uh, so you you consider uh, f. So if you have f, okay, is perpendicular to Q Q. Now here f is considered. Uh, so so this space is considering L two. So f is considered is an L2 function, which is perpendicular to that. So we're trying to now what do you now how do you show that this is complete? We're going to show that any any vector that is 
perpendicular to that has to be a zero vector, a zero function, right? Yeah. So, so we want to show that if this is true, then this implies that f equals to zero. But we don't know how to do it yet. So previously, in the previous lecture, we achieved kind of a compactness result. So then we show that f hs omega. Hs is a is a, is a uh, solid norm. It's less than equal to c times f. Uh, two omega. And here s is between one and zero. Yeah, one and zero. So this is something which we cannot show. We we are unable to prove this to zero. But I can show that if this happens, then the the solid norm. Hs is controllable by L2 norm. Obviously, this norm is 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 more than the L2. L2 is just by itself. The Hs will cover part of the derivative. But however, this is a, a fraction of it's a fraction of solid space. It's not the the one we defined in the previous in, in uh, PD2. But I can extend it using the uh, uh, free transform to define this and we some other way. But it's carrying the similar property. This means that if you have higher norm controllable by a lower norm, so this means that this app carries some kind of completeness. Oh, the compactness properties. Compactness properties. Mm. Okay. In particular, now suppose you have a so 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 the so the consequence here. Consequence one. So, so, so consider uh, you have sequence FF, which is bounded to P2Q. And uh, uh, it's bounded. In L2. So the sequence is, is a bounded sequence, and at the same time, it's, uh, it's perpendicular. The entire sequence is perpendicular. Now, with this result, what can you say about that? What what can you so 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 then you can see that uh, uh, this implies that f m h s omega is uniformly bounded. It's, it's, it's less than you can see. Well, here on the other side, if you take l l two norm, then l two norm is already bounded by a constant. So therefore, you can see in this case that. H S not is bounded by constants. Okay. So so this will imply what? <coughs> this will imply that the set is compact. Yeah. L2. It's not it's bounding in H S but it's compact in L2. This means you can abstract uh, uh, have a converging subsequence. Okay. Now this is a very important uh, uh, Consequence. Now, from this consequence, I can draw another consequence. Now, suppose you consider <coughs> consider all the functions, all the function that is perpendicular to that. I mean, it's consider the collection of function, the collection of f that's perpendicular to this PQQ. Now, how do you describe this collection? How do you describe? It? So this is going to be a subset in L2, right? Mm -hmm. Now how do you describe this subset? Now this set, the, the, this set can be anything. I mean this set can be just a, a arbitrary set, right? But here we're talking about the perpendicular components. I mean all the function that is perpendicular to this. Now what kind of set is that? Now suppose I have suppose this guy. A George, suppose this guy is just a one vector from mm -hmm. just one vector, okay? Like that. Okay, so, so suppose it's GQQ. Mm -hmm. So suppose here is a three use case, okay? So mm -hmm. what is the collection of all the perpendicular functions? Yeah. What? It's what? It's a plan, right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. okay. 
You also hold you have two by ten. You you want to put the meter to that. Well, put the meter to both both factors. What is that? <coughs> There will be a, a line. Right. Yeah. Line, line, and to, to the plane spanned by this vector, right? Yeah. So this example uh, tell us what? Now, how do you describe this uh, the set, the set of M mm -hmm. that is put in put in the vector? How do you describe the set? Mm -hmm. So we are going to you. So this set is the Nova P. I can't literally do this for the PQQ instance. Yeah. So this is going to be in L2, of course. Yes. That's the space stuff. But I think how do you describe this? So do you agree that uh, uh, this this thing is a subspace? It's a subspace. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's good. Because uh, suppose you have f f one, f two, they're both perpendicular to that. Okay. Then you then you add or subtract to the still perpendicular, right? Yeah, or you times any constant that's still perpendicular. So therefore, any linear combination was still inside yeah. the same set. Yeah. Okay, so this has to be subspace. Okay. And also, it's not just subspace. And uh, now, suppose you have a uh, Fm is a perpendicular in the sequence. At the same time, Fm converging to something. Mm -hmm. Then the limit function will still be perpendicular. Mm -hmm. You just use the integration has to limit, right? Yeah. So this means that this is not just a subspace, it is a closed subspace. Okay. It's a closed subspace. So but here the L2 itself is so is a Cooper space, right? L2 is a Cooper space. Now what can you say about a closed Subspace of a Hilbert space. It's still a Hilbert space. Yeah. Maybe a smaller Hilbert space, right? Yeah. Okay, so this is a, 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 a subspace which is closed, of course, it is Hilbert space. Now, when you talk about Hilbert space, okay, there's a result regarding a Hilbert space. We say that the uh, Let's say this is a Hilbert space, okay? Now, suppose you consider uh, the element here, you know, by its uh, 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 S, okay? S is a, so this is a Hilbert space, and the S is an element, it could be whatever element. You consider a unisphere, you consider a unisphere of all, about, about the Hilbert space. I mean, then you, you, you think about the, the uh, all the S, in the Hilbert space, such as the normal S, exactly the one. That's the unit sphere, right? So in the like three D case, it's just a sphere. Now in the two D case, it's just a circle, right? Now in the well, if Hilbert space, in the general case, Hilbert space is infinite dimensional, right? So this infinite dimensional sphere. Okay. Now there's a result in quantum analysis too that uh, this sphere, okay, is of course it's bounded. Right, mm -hmm. in the non -responded. It's not going to be compact if the dimension is infinite. So if this guy is compact, then this means that what it has on, that dimension has to be compact. Okay, right. Now if we if we uh, keep this theorem in mind, then you look at this situation. In this situation, it's a perpendicular thing. So this is a Hilbert space, right? Yeah. Okay. But uh, if you take the u unisphere from this uh, closed space, through the space, it will carry the property from the constant block. It's right. compact. Yeah. So this means what? This means this perpendicular 
uh, space is finite plane. Mm -hmm. okay, so this means that it's uh, not only closed substrate, it's finite plane. Now, if you come to finite dimension, the closeness is not important. You can see it's just close. It's a finite dimensional substrate, which automatically close. Okay. So another way to say this is uh, this guy. Another way to say this, say this properly is that this guy is a finite uh, half, 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 finite co-dimension. It has a finite co -dimension. So this is a, a it's a well, we can say this quite deep result regarding this uh, P to Q here. We turned out to be uh, the co-dimension is finite. Co-dimension is finite. Okay. So what we really need to show you is that this guy has co-dimension zero. If co-dimension -co -co zero, so this means that the uh, the perpendicular component that space has zero dimension. So the only zero function is inside. Okay? But anyway, so, so this is a finite finite. Okay, so so this is one of the uh, intermediate result. Okay. So using this result, we can show that if this is a complete, then this will imply the inverse. So 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 first we want to look at this. So again, I, I just want to introduce that ideas, not too much detail, okay? not too much detail. So the next step is to see that, uh, so, so now we can see that if P, Q, Q, 